Okay. Welcome everyone. This is our Thursday live stream. I'm Habiba, if you're watching this for the first time from the Trekking Pals. And I'm joined today by Emily from Emily Eats and Explores. And we've been doing these live streams for the past two months or so where we bring travelers from all over the world to share their travel stories and share tips about traveling all around the world. And I'm very excited to have you with me, Emily, today. Thank you. I'm very excited. Yeah. I, the first question I have for you, are you the real Emily in Paris? <laughs> I wish when that first started and they had a little preview on Netflix, uh, what, right when you got to your Netflix screen and it, for, and it said like, oh, my name's Emily, Emily Cooper. And everybody was like freaking out. I got so many text messages. <laughs> messages on Facebook and Instagram and it, it was crazy it was craziness so I wish that would be amazing <laughs> love Paris but um fortunately that's not me it's not based on my life <laughs> all right so um so let's do this for people who are joining us who don't know Emily if you want to go ahead Emily and introduce yourself where you're from how did you get into travel and what are some of the things that you do sure yeah so my name's Emily. I'm from Massachusetts. I was born and raised here. Um, I am a full-time epidemiologist. So I started working remotely back in March of 2020 and continuing to work remotely, um, having to stay in, in the U.S., but that's been really nice. So that I'm job, and I started doing content creation back in I really started picking it up in about October um, just as a creative outlet and a way to kind of share my travel tips and tricks and places that I've been um, because I realized family members and friends were always asking me for travel tips or asking me you know if I could help them plan trips or places to go or whatnot and you know, I started doing some solo traveling. And so my friends always thought that was kind of inspirational. So I just thought it would be a fun way, you know, to, to share some of the things that I've learned and all of that. So that's how I got into that. But I've been a traveler pretty much my whole life. Um, my family always made it a priority. We did a lot of traveling just on the East Coast. Um, which is pretty typical for someone in Massachusetts. You do, you know, like some beach trips and you go to Florida a lot, Disney World, things like that. Um, but when I was in fourth grade, we actually did a trip across the country. So we got a pop-up camper and we just traveled all summer. It was about two-ish months or so um, all over the US, which is why I've been to so many states, but I would love to hit them again you know, appreciate them more <laughs> when you're in fourth grade, you know, you don't appreciate them as much as, as you can now. And um, also, you know, that creative side, it would be interesting to see them through, you know, the lens that I have now, like with social media and sharing and things like that. So I think that's about it for me. Yeah. And, and I think you've done, uh, you said you're pretty new with content creation, but you have been traveling for a long time. You covered more than 40 states here in the United States, which is impressive, more than 30 countries around the world and a lot of solo travel. Um, so I'm sure there are a lot of things that we can learn from you. What was your first solo trip? Uh, what was your experience like? So I did a f small trips in the United States, um, but those they, it was pretty comfortable, pretty short trips. Um, and I was just starting to do that, you know, when I was in my graduate program and my friends started working and I realized it was hard to kind of always have someone to go with. So I was doing small things here and there. Um, but my big first solo trip was to Copenhagen and that was my first month abroad. And it definitely wasn't the experience that I was hoping for. Um, I think a lot of solo travelers do, well, from what I was reading when I was doing a lot of research, um, solo travelers will do longer trips and, you know, they're staying at hostels and in Asia and South, uh, South America and these really established backpacking routes that have, you know, a ton of activities, like everybody is just out to make friends and enjoy everything. And 
I, th I was thinking it was going to be a lot like that, but solo traveling in Europe and Scandinavian countries is a bit different, especially the time that I was going. Um, it was a lot of people going for work versus just, you know, a trip for pleasure. And so it was a bit hard for me to meet people. Um, I was also staying in a hostel for the first time and I didn't really know exactly what to expect, even though I was doing research and, and things, but I was always hearing like really great things about hostels. You're going to meet a ton of people. They're so fun. Um, and I was just having to learn as I go, you know, with sharing rooms with these strangers and having to deal with, you know, the noise and the lights and like having to share your space with, you know, five other people. Um, so I really had to learn a lot about myself and learning to, you know, to be alone and just enjoying the experience for what it is versus having, you know, these very high expectations. Um, but I did end up meeting some really nice people, but I did a lot on my own, which I think was great as well. And so that's really helped me on my other solo trips because, you know, I'm like, oh, if I spend the whole time alone, that's okay and I'll enjoy it. But if I don't, you know, if I meet a lot of people and we get to do things together, you know, that's great as well. So yeah, it was definitely a big learning experience, but I'm glad that I stuck with it and I kept going. <laughs> yeah, that's true because a lot of the, uh content creators or just people who share about their solo trips they make it sound like it's this glamorous type of travel and sometimes the reality versus what you really experience is different and also people have different personalities and your experience might be different than my experience but how do you feel like now when you compare your first trip when you traveled solo to what's going on right now do you feel like you're more confident right now? Did it help that you've been doing it a lot of times? Absolutely. I, I think that the more that you do it, the more that you gain experience and, and pick up little things along the way. Like I have had a completely different like hostel experience. And obviously if I went back to Copenhagen, I think I would definitely have a different experience. I'm not blaming the place at all. Um, I think it really just sometimes it depends on the mindset sometimes it does depend on location sometimes it depends on the people a lot of things but I think what makes me the most confident is that I feel like you know I can definitely navigate transportation in cities all on my own I can spend the whole day by myself I can handle you know if there's anything going on with roommates that's making me uncomfortable I can handle situations like that so I definitely feel like the more you do it, you know, the more that you're going to grow as a person and be able to just enjoy yourself that much more because, you know, you have skills that you didn't have in the very beginning. So I definitely feel a lot more confident now and it's definitely more enjoyable now that I've been doing it more. <laughs> and uh, I think you just came back from, from a solo trip just recently, right? Yes, I, I actually got back last night. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was pretty soon. Yeah. But. Um, I think we have a question right here. If you guys have any questions, feel feel free to, to, to leave them in the comments here. We'll just tackle them as we go. Uh, this is a question from, from my friend Suma. Do you work while traveling or do you plan your trips as vacation? So that is a great question. Um, during, you know, oh, oh the height of the pandemic, we'll say, um, I was doing some smaller trips where I was staying, you know, more around Massachusetts, doing New England and things like that. Um, and I was working a bit then, but I realized that it's really hard for me to work and want to experience the new place that I'm in, even if it's just, you know, around my state, or um, I did a trip with my boyfriend, we, we were with his family down in Florida, and I did work then as well. And I think when they're not like these month long trips, then it's a lot harder to work and want to travel because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I have this meeting, but I want to be 
outside with all of my friends and or the people that I'm with or even if you're alone you just want to experience this new place and sometimes you're just torn from having to work and planning vacation so this last trip that I just got back from I didn't I did end up taking two days off and then Monday we had a holiday so I didn't work at all during that time and I think that was really helpful for me to just like fully enjoy the experience. Um, but if, it, if I was there for two weeks, you know, I would definitely uh, be working and just kind of planning my days around my work schedule. Sure. It's sometimes difficult when you're traveling and you have work commitments, but at the same time, you're very excited to explore the destination. It's hard to, to strike that balance. Um, we have another question from our friend here. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, uh, but she is asking, have you traveled somewhere where English isn't the primary language? If so, how did you navigate that? Yes, I absolutely have. Um... I have never had a huge issue with a language barrier. Um, most of the time I will try to speak in the language, like I will say hello in their language, but then I will also follow it up, follow it up with an English hello, just for them to realize that I'm being respectful, but that I'm also a native English speaker. And a lot of times people will like that and realize, okay, you know, you're trying to be respectful by speaking the language, but we also realize, you know, English is your first language. So uh, most of the time, you know, if you're in the very touristy areas, a lot of people will speak English. Um, if you're having any troubles with this, then um, I, I like to use Google Translate. So that is an app that I have on my phone. You can also download it so you can use it offline, which is really great. And then um, I also found out they have a camera in the app and you can take photos of like menus and it will translate that for you or any type of like document that you need translated. Um, so this hasn't been an issue for me if another, if person hasn't um, like doesn't speak English and we can't figure each other out, usually I will just use the app or, you know, hand gestures or, or mining or anything like that. Um, you know, you'll end up getting to where you need to go. It just takes some patience. It takes some time on both parts, but I haven't had an issue and the translation apps are definitely helpful. Um, also having some common um, phrases like in your phone that you can take a picture of that you've uh, you know studied a bit beforehand so you can say you know hello thank you things like that just to have them you know mm -hmm. them, um, you know the, any numbers that you might know like in the US it's 911 but if there's anything like that and any emergency numbers any emergency phrases um, those are also good to have on hand as well um, what was it like in the Scandinavian countries? I've never traveled in that region. Did you come across a fair amount of people who speak English with, with no issues? Yes, I don't think I had any issues with someone not, not speaking English. Um, you know, sometimes it was like very, very brief, but you know, it, I think sometimes if you don't understand that they might not know a lot of English. It can come up across as rude, but it's definitely, you know, they might just know these certain phrases and, you know, you can always use the apps to try to figure everything out too. And just, you know, you just always want to work with the locals and you have to realize that they're not there to like cater to you. So <laughs> if you get from, you just have to be patient and just, you know, try to work on it as you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so there are a few questions about uh, money, which is an important topic. And I know that over on your Instagram, Emily, you create content to help people travel for cheap and then travel smart. So this, this first question uh, from my friend Nema here, she's asking, how can a college students start on their solo trips in terms of financing the trip and safety? So that's a great question. Um, I definitely 
didn't think when I was a college student I would be able to travel that much and now I realize that's definitely like a limiting belief that I have I know a lot of people that are in college that do travel now so I think you know if you have any type of like part-time job or any way that you can make money I think putting a chunk aside into a savings account um and just you know having that not touching it I think that's a great way to start is just start saving up that money and just making it a priority um there are multiple ways that you can travel for free so you can use credit card points if you have a decent amount of like, if you have a good credit score you know you have credits with either you know credit cards before or loans or things like that um you can get these credit cards and you can get point bonuses and you can use those for I usually like to use those for flights um so you can use things like that you can also use programs um like work away or any other type of volunteer program if you're also interested in volunteering and those are programs where you can work with a local organization and in exchange um you, you also get housing, you get food, and you just get to know a lot more about the local cart culture. So that's a great way to lower your costs as well. Um, a lot of those times, you know, you aren't working all day. You do have a chunk of time to go out and explore when you want, but accommodation and food are obviously um, one of the most big the biggest, probably one of the biggest expenses, you know, besides the, the transportation on your trip. Um, and then staying in, in hostels, you know, if you don't want to do any type of volunteer experience, um, then you can stay in hostels. It depends on where you go, but they can definitely be really cheap. The one that I just stayed in was $40 a night, but if you go to Southeast Asia or South America, Central America, those can be really cheap, you know, as low as $2, $3 a night. Um, and then if you guys follow Pax Light, um, she has a really great online resource where she posts travel scholarships and opportunities where you can travel for free. So they do have scholarships for college students for traveling, for studying abroad, things like that. And she will post those on her resource page. So Pax Light, if you want to look her up on Instagram or whatnot. Um, so that's also a great resource that I never knew anything about. Um, and yes, um, safety, you know, definitely the biggest thing is just following your gut. But I definitely try to do most of my activities during the day, not going out at night, um, communicating with friends and family where you're going to be, what you're doing, and not communicating that to strangers. So not telling strangers where you're staying. Um, you know, a lot of the times you're Uber driver or, you know, people on the street will ask you where you're staying or what you're doing. And I usually say, oh, I'm staying with a friend, you know, I'm, I'm meeting a friend at this point. Um, so just, you know, being smart, not sharing information, you know, a ton of information with strangers, but sharing a lot of information with your family back home and um, with your embassy and things like that. So. Awesome. Uh, great tips, Emily. I put, uh, I wrote down work away for people who are not familiar with the platform. It's a great platform. And the uh, Pax Light is the, the Instagram of, uh, of the other creator. Um, I think the second question was probably around the same, how to travel for, for cheap or for free. Another question from our friends, Wild Curlies, they are asking, have you ever tried woofing or traveled while volunteering? So I have done some volunteer programs, mostly with like um, high school. And then I did a travel program when I was in college. There were, there were short trips. They weren't like study abroad or anything. Um, so I did find those really enjoyable because like I said before, you do get to see a different side of the country that you're traveling to um, and meet locals and connect with them. I would love to try woofing. So I have a long-term trip plan to Southeast Asia. It's been putting, I've been putting it off because it's not open yet. Um, pretty much just Thailand is open. And I did 
want to bop around Southeast Asia. So when I do go there, the wo they have amazing woofing opportunities. So I'm definitely going to look into that while I'm in that area. Um, they have great ones in like Cambodia and Vietnam and pretty much all over Southeast Asia. And, you know, you get to stay in these really cool like treehouse or bungalows, like right by the beaches and, you know, try all the local food and so that would be a great opportunity. I just haven't done that yet, but hopefully in the future. Yeah, Southeast Asia sounds like a great destination, especially for cheap backpacking if you are on a budget. And even if you are traveling solo, it's, uh, there are a lot of countries that are pretty friendly. Uh, one more question. Wow, I'm liking this, Emily. We're getting a lot of questions on this uh, live stream. <laughs> uh, so this question, do you think traveling during the COVID or during the pandemic with all the travel restrictions could be hectic? Or what was your experience like traveling during the pandemic? Yes. So I really liked doing road trips during the pandemic. I didn't have to deal with, you know, all the flights and going through the airport and testing and all of that. So I have yet to travel abroad since the pandemic. Um, but I am hopefully going to Europe at some point soon. But within the U.S., um, like my my last trip that I just had, there were a lot of cancellations um, because of the Omicron variant. So a lot of flight staff um, have been getting COVID, and so they just don't have the staff to run the flights. Um, there were also some weather issues. Um, but, you know, in cases like this where your flights get canceled, it's just something that you have to just go with the flow with and just be really flexible if you do want to travel right now. Um, you definitely want to use online resources, you know, either like Skyscanner has them, TripIt has them to look at, you know, where you're going, if you need to quarantine, if you need a COVID test. So if you just need an antigen test or if you need a PCR test from a doctor, um, you really just have to know what restrictions and requirements that your country or state needs from you um, and make sure you have all of those and then just realize that you have to kind of go with the flow when it comes to traveling because flights might get canceled um you know there might be issues with hotel rooms you just you just never know right now. So um, I think it, it could be hectic, but if you plan well and you plan for some bumps in the road, then it will just be an experience like everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I think planning will make it a lot better, especially during this time. And uh, there are probably countries that are more travel during COVID friendly than others. So maybe even look into countries that are easy to travel to right now. Awesome. Um, Emily, I want to hear about your experience with the creating travel content. Uh, what made you want to start creating content for travel? What's been like uh, in the past you used to travel without creating content and now that you travel while creating content, wh what is your experience like creating content? So I originally started this Instagram. I wasn't posting it posting on it that much but I originally started it because I was planning on this long-term trip so I wanted something separate from my personal Instagram account to document all my travels on this hopefully I'm planning for about a year or a year and a half of traveling and so that's where it started and when I realized you know the more and more it was going to I think I just lost you Emily oh oh now it's good Okay, good. <laughs> um, I just started posting about my current travels. So I would do, you know, some reviews on places that I have been staying and free things to do and the hostels that I stayed in and such. And then I started, you know, going more into travel tips and um, learning more about, you know, growth and strategy and it's just it's been really fun I've been really been enjoying it I really enjoy making the reels I've been getting a lot of good feedback so that helps me to just keep going and keep sharing and um, I'm trying to start a YouTube channel also so on this last trip that I went to I was filming trying to do filming for YouTube and then it
Am I? You're back. I'm trying to also get into um, TikTok more as well. So I'm just trying to film a lot for all of those. And it can get overwhelming, but I told myself I was just going to have like one day where I was going to do a lot of filming. And then I was just really going to enjoy the rest of my time there and just take photos and take some videos where I want. Um, so it's been really nice. And I've really been enjoying, you know, seeing it from that side of like how I can share this, you know, in a way that helps others and, you know, also it's been nice for myself because I get to document my travels and remember all the places that I went to and where I went and where I, you know, see things that um, other people have done, you know, other content creators. That's been really great as well, just connecting with them. So it's been really fun. It's been a journey. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I, I personally have been enjoying your content on Instagram. I think it's very helpful. Unlike uh, the traditional form of content where people just show you beautiful places, you bring in that additional value, which is pretty neat. Uh, thank you so much. I love your content as well, obviously. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. Well, for people who are just joining us right now, we're talking with Emily here about solo travel, travel tips, how to travel for cheap. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments. Um, in the meantime, what are your future travel plans? I know you talked about Southeast Asia, but that's still up in the air. Any exciting destinations soon? Yes, I have. Um two more trips that I am going on shorter trips so I am doing a little weekend long weekend away with my boyfriend up in Maine so that's I'm really excited for that we're staying at a really cool place so I can't wait to post about that and then I'm doing a trip um, like a girl's trip with my mom and my sister and my niece and that's going to be such a cool accommodation I can't wait to share it. it's it's very very unique um, and I haven't really seen it a lot on Instagram or anything but I feel like it's going to be a place that blows up so I'm just keeping those very vague for right now but you'll have to follow me to see the places that I'm going to um, but then I'm also going to Portland Oregon for uh, the women's travel fest I'm very excited for that so I will be there for about four days and then um, I'm also going to Travel Con, which is in Memphis, Tennessee. And, and I am traveling, I'm staying somewhere for a month that I'm also keeping a secret. I like to be ominous about everything. <laughs> but that will be my first like really long term trip since all the pandemic happened. So that will be really nice. That's awesome. I think it's fun when you don't give away where you are going so that people who, who love enjoy who love watching your content and enjoy it, it just build that excitement, which is pretty neat. Very nice. Um, so other than that, I mean, I, I was actually watching your stories earlier today with some crazy happenings during your last trip. Do you have any crazy travel stories or something that wasn't so pleasant that happened in one of your trips that we can learn something from? Yeah, I mean, um, for those who don't know, but uh, I just posted on my story about a situation that happened um, with a, a woman in a cafe. She was becoming very violent and physical with a worker and, um, you know, saying scary things. And I was one of the only ones in the cafe. So that was definitely the scariest experience that I've ever had traveling, I would say. Um, but I think I'm also really safe when it comes to. I think I lost you again. Oh, you're back. Okay. Um... Oops. Oh, am I there? Uh, you are back, yes. I think there's a problem with connection. Yeah, just making sure that you do your research on, you know, the areas that are safe to walk around in. Um, and, yeah, so that, I definitely haven't had that many experiences. I have had some situations, you know, like your typical, like, catcalling or 
things like that. Um, people going up to you, you know, asking for money and things. But I haven't really been in any situation where I felt like completely unsafe. Um, so I think that's been really lucky. <laughs> but you definitely just have to be vigilant. You just have to be aware of your surroundings. You know, don't always have your headphones in. Don't be walking with your facing your phone all the time. Just just be aware. Mark you know, know the right place to go and try not to wander around or arrive at a place at night, you know, in situations where you might be a little bit more vulnerable, vulnerable or, you know, sticking out a lot in, in ways that you could potentially be a target for, you know, pickpocketing or anything else in this world. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. Like you said, sometimes it's just common sense. Things that you wouldn't do at home, don't don't be cavalier about things and try, you know, go wild in your new destinations. You have to be more careful. Uh, we have another question from uh, Niema. She is in Sa Salem, Oregon, and she's asking about uh, places to, to visit in Portland if you have any suggestions. Yeah, so I haven't done too much on my Portland trip. Um, I would definitely love suggestions if anybody has those. I'm I because it is a conference I'm spending a lot of the time in Portland at the conference center. So I think it's the World Forestry Center they're having it at. Um so it's two it's about two and a half day conference and um they're doing some trips on the side to um Lost you again. Can you I'm guys? Here? Yeah, you're, you're here. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so I definitely haven't looked into Portland too, too much. If anybody has recommendations for me, then that would be great. But definitely um, excited for, you know, some good coffee. I just heard it's really good vibes in Portland. You know, the food's really good. Voodoo donuts, everybody keeps telling me about. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, I definitely have to do my own own research, but I only have, you know, a, a day or two where I get to myself that's not in the conference since it does go all day. Yeah, I have traveled to to Portland back in 2018. Uh, it was very beautiful there. Are obviously, the, the famous waterfall, I don't remember the name. Uh, they have beautiful state parks. And they also have, not too far from downtown, they have this beautiful mansion uh, that you can go and tour. And it's also got a beautiful view overlooking Mount Hood. And Mount Hood is the, the highest peak in, uh, in the state. So the view is very beautiful if the sky is clear. I think it, it's worth going there and checking that out. Great. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so we talked about trips for uh, safety. We talked about uh, traveling uh, for, for cheap. We talked about content. Um, is there any other tips or advice that you'd like to share, Emily? I just want to let everybody know if you have, if you've thought about doing any type of solo trip, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. You can start small. But if you've thought about it at all and you're just worried that, you know, bad things are going to happen or you're going to feel lonely or any of that, I would just recommend you quit. You know, you just, you learn so much about yourself and you learn how to rely on yourself. You gain so much confidence and it's such a great experience. And it's also a great way to learn more about the country or your, the city that you're traveling to. Um, great way to, you know, have complete autonomy about everything you know you really get to decide exactly what you're doing where you're going and it's something that you don't always get in everyday life so I would just say do it and if you're worried follow me send me a dm and we can definitely chat about it and talk through all of your worries and but yeah Awesome. Yeah, so if you guys are not following Emily already, I think you absolutely should. She's always sharing wonderful tips. And sometimes it just helps to know that there are other people out there with the same interests, perhaps the same personalities who are doing it. And it's very in encouraging. Um, I know, Emily, that you started, the I think, building a community called Travel Connect. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I, I think there might be some people who are interested here. 
Absolutely. So I posted a story a little while back around Christmas time, just asking if people would be interested in meeting for content creation to just talk about, you know, what they're doing, what's working for them, what's not working for them, and just support because there are some highs and lows when you're creating content and, you know, trying to grow a community and following and things. Um, so uh, I also had someone message me and ask, you know, if I would be interested in doing something for solo traveling and maybe solo traveling for the first time and just a way to chat. So I decided to see what interest there would be in creating those two groups. So one for travel content creators and one for solo travelers. And um, I have had a lot of interest so far. So I'm just trying to, you know, increase the numbers and then I'll be starting to do some groups. Um, I'm hoping to do one do like each group once a week and it would be like a zoom and just very casual maybe having um different topics every week you know so people would know the topic and if they're interested in the topic they could join and just chatting through and working on challenges and that and just connecting with fellow people that you know it's always good to have support in whatever area you're working on or doing or whatever Awesome. <laughs> that interests you it's always good to have other people in in that niche so yeah I haven't started them just yet I'm just you know collecting interest right now and then kind of allowing it to unfold from there it probably will evolve a lot at some point but right now it's you know, casual groups where you can discuss you know what's what's going on in your life yeah. And sometimes it's helpful, like you said, in, uh, if, if you have a group of solo female travelers just to support each other. Sometimes you get nervous right before your trip or while traveling. It's good to know that there is a community or a small group of people to talk to and share that concern. Definitely. So hopefully that, that all works out, but I'm really excited for it. And everybody else seems to be too, so it should be starting. Awesome. Well, um, if you guys have any other questions, you can put them in the comments. But I think we, we covered the, a lot of uh, useful tips uh, right here. So thank you so much, Emily, for your time. Uh, make sure that you go subscribe to her Instagram. And uh, any last thoughts? Is there anything that you want to share before we wrap up uh, for right now? No, I just want to thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. I love connecting with other travelers. And I know you do a lot more adventurous things i'm hoping to get to that at some point <laughs> eventually do and you know going off the beaten path but um yeah so i just want to thank you so much i want to thank everybody for all of your questions and i hope this was useful and definitely go to my page and check around and hopefully you know you'll get some good resources and tips from that so thank you everyone thank you emily have a great day Thank you, everyone